Andrew here at Boss Bar Wall Club in Mountain View. Just stepped out of the, the Muscle Talk World headquarters. Um, today I want to go over uh, using the lacrosse balls. And this is actually just one some question I got on Twitter. Um, Jamie Brower from BC. Thanks for the question, man. Keep it coming. Um, so what we're going to do, is a lot of people use lacrosse balls almost uh, like the duct tape with myofascial release. So, you know, whatever you have a problem, that is use lacrosse balls. But we're going to go over a little more detail of the posterior anatomy, or the anatomy of the posterior shoulder. So what exactly you're working on and how to maximize that stretch and retention. We go to the gym, we do things with a tent. But when we stretch, we kind of just roll around haphazardly. So we're going to give yourself a little more focus next time you lose the cross ball. We have Trey here, face of the way. So we're showing sort of landmark uh, the posterior shoulder and on the scapula. So the scapula is going to house a rotator cuff. Um, so the prime suspects for trigger points or knots, or whatever you want to call them, uh, infraspinatus, supraspinatus, teres, and your rhomboids. Um, so the sake of these, we'll start um, with your infraspinatus, and your infraspinatus is an external rotator, but, but it works best in zero degree shoulder adduction, so the neutral shoulder that Dre has here. Um, so to apply pressure, you lean against the wall like this, but then internally rotate the shoulder in a neutral position. So we'll show that on camera later. Um, teres minor, it comes on that lateral border of the scapula. Now the teres is more active as the shoulder comes up towards 90 degrees of abduction. Um, so when pinning an external rotator, you want to get to 90 degrees of abduction, specifically the teres, you want to internally rotate from there. So we're going to reach across and internally rotate. Uh, rhomboids, so we're going to drop that down. Uh, rhomboids attach the lateral or the midline board of the scapula into the spine. So they retract the shoulder blades. Go ahead and lift my finger. Get rhomboids. So to stretch something that retracts, we want to protract it. Uh, so you can settle anywhere down the uh, the medial board of the scapula, and from here, what we're going to do is reach fully across. So the, the intent is to get that shoulder blade away from the spine as much as possible. Okay, now we're going to switch positions to get to the supraspinatus and upper trap. We'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, for the last one here, um, we're going to get into the supraspinatus and upper trap. Um, for the sake of continuity, we're going to stay on the supraspinatus primarily, uh, sticking with the knee of the rotator cuff. Uh, so the supraspinatus lies above the spine of the scapula, just beneath the upper trap. A little hard to access with a cross ball, but not totally impossible. Um, so the role of the supraspinatus primarily is to abduct the shoulder 30 degrees, so take from, take from a neutral position 30 degrees, and then your delts can go from there. But, so to target that, something abducts, we need to adduct to stretch it. So we're gonna pin it, find a door frame or a, or a corner, pin in, and we're gonna take the shoulder into adduction across the front of the body. So there you have it. There's four easy rotator cuff stretches with a crossball. A little more focus. We'll see you next time.